everybody, it's Yvonne with Trout's Fly Fishing, back with the forecast for June 18th. Uh, runoff has peaked and we are seeing it on the downslope. Uh, that means water is clearing uh, and there's a lot of really good fishable water this time of year. Uh, obviously, uh, things probably peaked a little bit earlier than, than normal. Uh, you know, obviously it's a little bit lower than normal and there are certain fisheries, specifically uh, any of those upper Colorado fisheries above State Bridge where, you know, things are hotter than they should be. So we're going to stay away from those, but there's a lot of really good opportunity uh, on the lower Colorado, so below State Bridge once uh, the piney dumps in a bunch of cold water. Uh, so below State Bridge has been fishing really well. Water temperatures have been staying uh, in that really good productive zone. Uh, the eagles on the drop, that's been fishing really well. Good caddis hatches, uh, seeing golden stones and the like. Um, the Arkansas is coming, rounding into shape. We're gonna start seeing golden stones, yellow sallies, uh, green drakes will be uh, around the corner, caddis, PMDs, still, still seeing some blue wings. Uh, and blue wings we'll see, you know, those will be around throughout the summer, but uh, there's obviously a lot of other hatches to pay attention to. So we're sort of getting into that prime time, like have your box full with a bunch of different flies because we are seeing a ton of bug activity uh, this time of year. So uh, it's a really exciting time. Obviously the tailwater is fishing well. We saw some uh, bump along the South Platte uh, and that has uh, increased the productivity of fishing. Uh, some bigger bugs, uh, fish are a little bit happier. They're not uh, sort of uh, stuck in so, sort of those similar, uh, familiar uh, low water holes, they're sort of able to spread out and getting a little happier uh, sitting there mid-column eating uh, emerging bugs or you know dead drifting bugs and then eating dries as well. So uh, it's a great time to be on the water. Also have Calabatus hatches, chronomid hatches on the, on the uh, big reservoirs in the South Park. So yeah, good time to be on the water. My, one of my favorite times. I know I say that a lot, but it's one of my favorite times. So let's get to it bugs, flows, and weather. Let's start with bugs. I'm going to start with streamers as I normally do. I'm going to pick out one of my favorite flies, not my favorite color, but it is it's one of Zeke's favorite colors. That is the brown and tan peanut envy. Uh, I'm a big fan of the peanut envy. I like its profile. It's not too big, uh, but it does push enough water where you're going to uh, attract fish, uh, especially as we as water's clear uh, and still high uh, on like the Colorado, you know, down lower on, you know, the Eagle, even the Arkansas. Throwing some big meat this time of year uh, can bring a lot of fish to the net and then it can also bring uh, quite a few nice fish to the net. So uh, this is one of those times when there's a lot of food in the system, fish are actively on the banks, uh, they feel comfortable, there's enough water where they don't feel spooked uh, and uh, they're ready to eat. So throwing a big streamer like this peanut envy, always a good idea. Uh, golden stones, hoppers are going to start to uh, uh, be, uh, play a role. Um, and with that, you know, obviously you can fish big foam, hippie stompers, chubbies and the like. I wouldn't, wouldn't forget about like a size eight stimulator. This is a yellow, the yellow variety. Stimulators are one of my favorite flies. Uh, just watching this thing, this pillow float down, get chomped. It's, uh, it's hard to beat. It rides uh, relatively low, which is good. Uh, you know, those stoneflies and, and hoppers don't ride high. Uh, you want them sort of sitting down a little bit. Uh, and it can hold up a pretty decent sized dropper as well. Um, I was fishing this around Memorial Day uh, on the South Platte and caught quite a few fish, even though it was raining, uh, qu quite a few fish on this, uh, this yellow stimulator. It's hard to beat a classic like uh, this stimulator. So, uh, Kink that up, then use some desiccant uh, as it uh, starts to lose, as, as the gink starts to lose effectiveness, throw some desiccant on there and you'll be able to fish that all day uh, until the hackle falls off. So there we go, that's, uh, that's a, a nice dry fly. Another good dry fly, so PMDs are gonna be coming out, especially uh, mid-morning um, along the South Platte, on the Eagle, uh, the Colorado you'll see them, you'll see them on the Arkansas as well. Uh, so I grabbed a Parawolf PMD, um, you know, sort of a classic, a classic uh, profile, a classic fly, uh, just with that PMD color, um, you know, sort of sets it apart. Uh, love fishing this through the riffles. Uh, you can pick them up when they're rising, but you can also pick them up uh, sort of blind casting as well. Uh, with those elevated flows along the South Platte, uh, I picked a tailwater sow bug in the 
tungsten variety. Uh, scuds, sow bugs uh, getting flushed out of uh, cheeseman right now, and so you're getting productive uh, scud fishing. You can use a variety of colors. You obviously, uh, you know, as you move away from uh, cheeseman, you're going to dull that color down because the scuds won't be um, won't be they'll be dead or deader, deadish, uh, and so they start to lose their color a little bit. But uh, the tailwater sow bug, great option. Uh, and then if you're dry dropper fishing, um, dra grabbed a jigged Frenchie. Uh, I've been really liking fishing, uh, you know, the jigged flies, the Euro style flies underneath a dry, uh, big dry fly, um, especially when you're fishing pockets. A lot of times, uh, if you don't have something that sinks quickly, you're not gonna get that dropper down into the, uh, into the pocket quickly and you'll, it'll say, get down to that sort of feeding zone uh, later on in that run or that soft pocket or or that glide or whatever um, and so this allows it you know the jig fly and the tungsten allows it to get down really quickly uh, I think is the major advantage so um, obviously there are more bugs present than what I've been able to show this is uh, you know that's five quick flies also keep in mind caddis are going to be present uh, evening caddis hatch on the eagle has been uh, very productive from what I understand hoping to go check that out next week um, you know, the you know, PMDs, yellow sallies, uh, green drakes will start to, to make an appearance along the Arkansas soon enough. Um, and so, yeah, it's a good time to be out on the water. Those are some good flies. So that was bugs. Let's talk flows. Uh, let's talk floats. Uh, so obviously, there is a bit of doom and gloom to be to be had if you're looking at the Upper Colorado. It's not great the amount of uh, the the little amount of water that we're seeing up there. Um, obviously, we need to, those reservoirs need to fill, and then those they'll start to release water, and that will sort of correct this problem that we're having and uh, bring some cold water into the system, uh, which will make fishing more productive, and you know the fish will be. Uh, in better shape going forward, uh, but for now, I'd avoid that section. You know, those sections. You know, the Williams Fork, uh, the you know, the Blue. We're going to start to see some temp issues. You know, um, you know down below Green Mountain, and then uh, you know, the Colorado there is going to is is off limits at this point. Um, however, below State Bridge, flows are coming down. The Eagle flows are coming down. Obviously, the water's still high, so you want to wade carefully, but. Uh, you know, you can stick to the bank and fish are going to be pushed up on those, on those soft edges. Uh, so you don't really need to wade that aggressively as it is. Um, you know, the same thing with the Arkansas, flows are coming down. So we're starting to see, you know, that we're in that post runoff mode uh, where we still have higher flows, but the flows are clearing. Uh, the same thing goes for the South Platte. So South Platte, let's double check real quick. Yeah, so South Platte, is, the Deckers is at 210. Um, so they dropped that from about 260 to 210. Still a very good flow. We were up in Cheeseman uh, the other day, um, you know, doing some stuff with Umpqua, learning uh, some new techniques, some new Euro, Euro techniques, and uh, you know, fish were happy. Uh, they were eating a variety of bugs. So there's obviously, you know, quite a few things to be had. You know, crane flies can be uh, thrown into that mix as well. Um, you know, so. Flows are really good along the South Platte there. Uh, the Dream Stream, it's around 100. Uh, so that's dropped from its, you know, around 200 uh, earlier last week. Uh, and then below 11 mile, you're looking at about uh, 57. So uh, 11 miles still um, sort of at that base flow, but uh, you're seeing some pretty healthy flows on the Dream and around Deckers and Cheeseman, uh, which is obviously a good thing. So uh, it means a little, you can, you know, temps aren't is an issue there at all. Uh, you can use um, you know, use a little bit thicker tippet, uh, you know, through Deckers and Cheeseman uh, than you would because you're using typically bigger bugs when you have these higher flows. Um, I did run into some good dry fly hatches as well. So, uh, you know, PMDs and blue wings were present uh, this past week, which was nice to see and fish were happy about it. So uh, that's, that's flows. Uh, let's get to weather.
All right, looking at weather for the next 10 days, uh, Sedalia and Vail as, as usual. Uh, looks like in Vail, you're gonna see highs in the 80s, uh, lows in the low 50s, uh, and then in Sedalia, highs in the 90s, some highs in the mid 80s, and lows in the, typically around the, uh, typically around 60. Um, this is obviously a welcome respite from the uh, wild heat that we had over the past couple of weeks. Um, so that's a, that's a good thing for our comfort level. It's also a good thing for the fish's comfort level. That's not gonna heat the water up as quickly. Um, and we see some, you know, some isolated thunderstorms worked in there. Hopefully that continues. Hopefully we see, you know, sort of, sort of uh, daily afternoon thunderstorms uh, in the mountains and around here that will help keep. Uh, obviously, we didn't have as much snowpack this year, uh, and so rooting, rooting for do your rain dances. You know, do put on your rally cap for the rain. Uh, so, because rain's good, especially this time of year uh, when we've had a little bit less snowpack. Uh, sort of extends the season a little bit and won't run into as many uh, temperature issues down the down the road. So uh, we're starting. We're going to start to see high country open up as well. Uh, the tail, uh, the not tailwaters. Well, tailwaters are fishing well, but the still waters are fishing well. So coronamids, uh, calabatus have started. Um, you know, Tanner uh, was up on uh, in South Park and said there were fish cruising in the shallows, crunching calabatus uh, early morning. And that's pretty hard to beat. Pretty nice fish cruising in the shallows, eating calabatus. That's uh, it's a good time. So uh, don't rule out the still waters this time of year. They can be productive throughout the summer. So yeah, it's a good time to be on the water. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, you can find us here in the shop up in Frisco, troutsflyfishing.com. Au revoir.